Hey there crew, welcome back to another episode with Home Media Bliss. I am your host Eddie, behind the camera I got my son Justin, and we also have uh, crew member Gus over there already started at hard at work. We're standing in beautiful Saddlebrook, New Jersey on this awesome, beautiful sunny day, and today we are doing security cameras. Should I say surveillance cameras? So let's take a tour of what we're doing at this place. Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to mention that please stick around at the end of this video because we have a very important story about this job. So make sure you stick around to the end of the video. It was a very interesting story that what we are here today to do. Uh, to my left, we got team member Gus, that he's already started some of the wiring. All right, there's Gus, say hello. Hey, and he's already started some of the pre-wire that we're doing to uh, exchange some of these cameras. So let's go around the site to show you the existing cameras that are here and the cameras that we're gonna be replacing them with and talk about the system that we are using today. Starting at the front door, right above me, you're gonna see that we already have one camera that we installed last year here. We're gonna be replacing that camera with a more updated camera. Over here to my left is the driveway. So if you take a peek there, we already have a 20 foot ladder set up and we, uh, our ladders are fiberglass because we believe in fiberglass, not metal or uh, aluminum uh, uh, ladders. We wanna use fiberglass. We're gonna be installing one camera there and we're also gonna be adding another camera. Uh, the existing camera that was there was looking at the driveway so the client can see the cars coming in and out. But the second camera on top of it, it's gonna oversee the opposite side of the street to my left. So I'm standing on the front side of the house, more to the right. Now the client never had a camera up here, but he's requesting uh, that we install the camera up here. So we're gonna add up another camera here and it'll be the uh, PTC AI uh, 420 Luma camera that we'll talk about the camera system that we're going to be using here. Let's talk about the back. At the right side of the house, we're going to be replacing the existing camera that's there, okay, from a four megapixel to an eight megapixel. In the backyard, we're going to be replacing the existing two cameras that we installed a year ago. So you're going to see them that we installed them to the highest point of the wall. See it there? We got one on the, to my right and one to my left. We'll replace those. And the reason why we installed them to the highest point that you see there is so the client has a full view of the backyard. And not only that, he can also view the fence to see if anybody's gonna be jumping over. At the left side of the house, almost towards the backyard, we will also be replacing that camera from a four megapixel to an eight megapixel for better clarity. Uh, so let's go over here to the front. Okay, at the left side front of the house, we find ourselves next to the meter. Now, why am I showing you this? That is because this is the point of services. We have the electrical service right here. We also have the internet service here. Now, due to the, uh, some events that happen in the neighborhood, which I will talk about at the end of this video, stick around, all right, it'll be fun. We're going to take his fiber service feed. This is how his internet comes in here. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and take this apart. We're gonna pull it out and we're gonna go ahead and relocate it and we're going to install it to a higher point. So anybody that decides to come over here and cut his internet, they're not gonna be able to cut it. So we're gonna go ahead and hide this inside of the house so they don't see it. All right, crew, let's talk about the technology that we're gonna be deploying on this particular install. Uh, I realized that the marketplace is super saturated with so many different brands, uh, and we are well aware of what all those brands can do. But on today's job here, we're gonna be using the Luma X20 system. This system, it's already in place in the client's house. We deployed it about a year ago. Uh, we installed six cameras with a uh, NVR, which stands for Network Video Recorder. Uh, and uh, he loved it. He loves the interface. He loves the app. He loves the fact that he gets notifications. Uh, uh, he gets uh, little screenshots of people walking up to the, to this, uh, to the door. Uh, he also has screenshots of uh, cars pulling in and out of the driveway. Uh, so he loves it. Um, so the client is upgrading from four megapixels to eight megapixels. Now, what does that mean? All that means is that the client has got more clarity, more uh, high definition on his camera, and um, it'll be greater image either on his phone and also on his tablets, and also in, if we can send the video to his TV. Um, there's nothing wrong with the existing system that he has. In fact, we're actually gonna pull it out and we're gonna repack it up again and install it at his brother's house. So it'll stay in the family. Now over here I have the existing NVR that he has. It's a 124 terabyte. Okay, that's the max that he can do on that um, NVR. Uh, the NVR that we're gonna be installing is a 220 model and it's actually four terabytes, but it has a second slot for us to add more hard drive. So check this out. If you get a little close up of that, 
So the existing four terabytes that's in this NVR, we're gonna be adding 14 terabytes. So the client will end up with 18 terabytes of recording space. What does that mean? Well, from four terabytes at eight cameras, he can only really record three weeks at 24 hours. But from there, now he's gonna have up to two months, possibly three, depending on how much recording he's got. Um, so that's why he's upgrading the uh, system from a uh, four terabyte to 18 terabytes. So we have the cameras right here, eight megapixels, uh, varifocals. Varifocal lens means that we'll be able to uh, zoom in and out the lens to a fixed point, okay? They're not motorized, we can just basically pinpoint the area that the client wants to see. Now, one thing that we're very excited to deploy today, and then, sorry if I'm rambling, I'll cut it short real soon, is that we're gonna be installing these four megapixel PTC 25 zoom in optical motorized camera that gives them 360 view, uh, uh, degrees of view. It also has AI intelligence in there. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that it's gonna be pointing at the road, okay? This camera does not have what is called uh, license plate recognition, but it actually has AI. So it will follow any fast moving objects. So what does that mean? That if somebody's walking in the, uh, uh, in the uh, front sidewalk, the camera will follow that person. But if something moves a little faster, then the camera will focus on that and keep on following the car until it gets to the end of the road. And the client could always go back and see that view and then zoom in on the license plate. Once the camera is done following the car and the car is out of view, then the camera will automatically resume to its position and you'll just keep on rotating and just keep an eye on the whole area that is covering, okay? So um, I think I'm, I'm done yapping. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'm telling you, I'm gonna give you a story about why we're here. Uh, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna grab the uh, 28 foot fiber ladder and uh, help these guys and stop yapping. So let's go. All right, crew, throughout this video, we're gonna be showing you some tips and tricks of how we do the work. It is not a DIY, and we're not telling you how to do it. It is only showing you how we do it for you when you hire us, of course. Now, I set up the 28-foot ladder uh, against the house right here, it's fiberglass. We like to use fiberglass, not aluminum. Fiberglass is a little more sturdier, more expensive, but more secure. Now, if you notice, I actually have it in reverse. Now, reason being is because I like to use the rope so I can manage the ladder. So if I go this way, when I pull it out, see that? I have the rope. I can manage my ladder. So then I can either raise it or lower it, okay? Set it in place, and then when I need to set it against the house, I simply keep holding it, and I place it right around the house. I don't have to slam it in, okay? And then I notice, for some of you that are probably gonna jump into the comment, he goes, Eddie, you don't have some uh, pillows on top of the ladder. What are you gonna do? You're scratching the house. Well, slow down, we do have that. But if you notice, I carefully place the ladder against the house. Now let's show you another trick to how we hide the wires. Now, don't you just hate it as a homeowner that when you hire a professional and you think it's a professional, I don't know how you found them online, cheapest bidder, Thumbtack, eBay, I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know where the places are to find cheap contractors. But don't you hate it when you hire somebody to wire up your house and then all of a sudden you just see wires running across the siding over here, they punch it right out and then you just go across like, how horrible is that? Well, guess what? The way we do it, when we have to run wiring on the outside, well, we remove the siding. We'll pop it out, run the wire under without damaging the paper barrier, and then we'll reinstall the siding right back. Let me show you how we're doing it. Okay, so to my point that I just made a few seconds ago about the siding on the outside and wires going the way across on the house, very ugly. What we do is that we'll take the siding apart. So team member Gus here is gonna be installing two cameras right here in the front. And uh, the best way to get the wire over here without ripping out the walls open, we're just gonna go ahead and take the siding. We'll go ahead and open it up. See that on there? Get a shot of that, Justin. See that? We're right underneath that. We'll come out right here, run the wire in between, run some rods in there, pull the wire up, and then we'll go ahead and reinstall the siding back with the siding tool that we have. And we'll park this right inside and the client will never know that we were here unless we tell him or unless he watches this video and subscribe and share it with his family. Hey, home media crew, this is Justin. We're going to be adding the 14 terabyte hard drive that my dad was explaining to you guys earlier. It's a very simple process. If any of you guys that it's in the audience members have built a computer before, it's essentially the same thing of connecting the cables to said uh, hardware. 
but if you fellow crew members will notice, I actually have a little cut here, and that's because I uh, might have forgotten a couple of things, and you'll even see that later where I went to go ask my dad, um, hey, where are the other connectors for the, um, for the hard drive? But anyway, the rest of the footage is me screwing on the hard drive to said chassis of the NVR. And you'll see that I'm like doing the most overt, complicated way of screwing the hard drive to the chassis. And that's because I didn't feel, really feel comfortable flipping the whole chassis upside down and then screwing the hard drive like that. I wanted to keep the hard drive as safe as possible, but eventually I just gave in to the devil and decided to flip it around. And that's simply because the hard drive was never spinning. The disk getting was never spinning, so you know, there's no data in it. It's just it's just completely fresh and new so if even if it was upside down it'll be completely fine so let's finish up this time lapse and let's take it back to my dad hey there crew welcome to the attic now we find ourselves into the attic most of the times in certain jobs as we need to access some wires or run new wires i got team member gus over there hold it up in that corner if you can see him so he's uh, running some wires for us over there. In fact, actually, we need an electrical outlet in that corner because we are relocating equipment to a corner and uh, there's no power there. So we there's no outlets up here other than next to the uh, AC unit. So we did find an electrical outlet right over here. So we're gonna go ahead and tap on, on this existing outlet. Now we did find out that this is actually on a 15 amp circuit. So of course, we're gonna honor that cable by running the 14-2 wire with the ground and then we're gonna ground it and bond it to this existing outlet and create a new tail to a new outlet that we need in that corner. Once we're ready for the installation of the security lockbox, we're gonna depot this into a secret location for added security. So then it's a lot harder for any intrusion or any uh, anybody breaking into the house trying to find the recorder. So we're gonna place the recorder right in here and we're also gonna relocate the fiber tab from Verizon. The ONT, we're gonna lock it up in here as well and the client will be the only one with the locking key on the security steel box that's gonna be dead bolted into the secret location. We're gonna wire it up. Also, because it's an enclosure, I don't know if you can see it from there, but it also has a cooling fan. So we're gonna be cooling the equipment in here. Alrighty then, so um, let's get going. And I'm back. This is just a quick montage of the work we did around the house, such as swapping out the cameras and also tying in the 14-2 electrical to the only outlet in the attic. So if anything, Please enjoy this little montage, and then we're going to take it back with my dad. Hey there crew, in this corner we got team member Gus putting the finishing touches on that electrical outlet that we need. He's almost done, so now let's go and find out that circuit. All right crew, while Gus is putting the finishing touches on that electrical outlet that we need, team member Justin ran the 14 2 electrical wire that we need for that outlet, and he brought it out all the way over here to the existing outlet that we have here by the uh, AC unit. Uh, it's still attached to our uh, 14 2 spool, we haven't cut it yet because we got to go to the electrical panel and find that circuit. Uh, so how do we find that? Well, in this case, we're going to be using our Klein circuit breaker finder that has two pieces in one. See that? So we attach the uh, tester here to the electrical outlet. Okay, it's got some reading lines on it because it's also a GFI uh, breaker tester as well. And uh, so we have two uh, yellow lights, meaning that this electrical outlet is grounded, which is very important. We want that. Um, 
and we're gonna do that. We're gonna make sure that we're grounded and we're bonded as well. Uh, and then, so in order to find the circuit breaker, um, I'm just gonna turn on this unit. We got a little beep over here. So now I gotta go to the circuit breaker panel and find the breaker. So let's go. All right, crew, I'm done with that outlet upstairs. Now I came down into the garage, into the uh, circuit panel over here to uh, turn that circuit back on. And here it is, it's already on. It didn't trip, that means it's grounded and bonded. So it's all good. And then I took the liberty of labeling it for the client. So right here, it's called attic outlet. This is the uh, drawing sign for uh, outlet. So uh, let's go back to the attic and see what's going on. All right, crew, we're almost done here. We're wrapping things up. Team member Justin is putting the final touches on this lock box. Hold on, Justin. Let's take a look inside for a second. All right, so inside we installed the fiber optic feed from Verizon files and then we have the new NVR with all cameras lit up and connected cooling fan is running new electrical outlet that we installed and now Justin is gonna lock that box and we also bolted that box to the floor and all he's got to do is put the screw nuts close the tab lock the key we're all done in here all right crew Justin just finished installing that top plate on the locker and he locked the front cover with the key and we're gonna hand over the keys to the client and we are done let's get out of here hey there crew we're just about done for the day uh the guys are cleaning up they're getting all the tools together sweeping uh gathering all the garbage uh we had to stop filming for a little bit the client got home and then we needed to teach him all the progress that we did for the day show him the app show him the cameras he needed to prove all the angles and make sure that everything was tier perfect to his liking so as i said earlier in the video uh, if you would have stuck this far into the video, thank you for that. I appreciate that. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Tell other people about us. Uh, it'll help the channel. We really appreciate it, especially a father and son team. Uh, that we're just trying to get this channel going. Uh, but I promised you a story. Why the client called us back uh, to upgrade his system. Now, the reason for the callback to the job and upgrade his existing camera system, that was because his neighbor got broken into. The people knew when to come in, how to come in, what day, what time, and what stuff to take. Not only did they steal a lot of valuable items, but they knew where to take the DVR, the recorder, or the MVR, should I say. They knew when to grab it and take it with them. So my neighbor, thanks to the cameras that we installed, was able to get a glimpse of the vehicle and hand over a clip to the police to help them try to catch those people that did that. So because our client is a very hardworking person, and not only that, he's married and got a very new lovely daughter, his family is number one. So he decided to spare no expense, okay? You cannot replace your family. So he called us back and he says, Eddie, I want your team back in here right now. I want more cameras. I want more high definition, cleaner looking cameras. And then I wanna be able to zoom and move around and I wanna be able to follow cars and I wanna be able to follow and get license plates. So we deliver that for him today. Aside from all that, we also expanded his hard drive so he can record more days and have more footage into his recording. And God forbid if it ever happened, he wanted to make it a little bit more difficult. So he asked us for some ideas and we decided let's hide the recorder. Not only hide the recorder, but let's lock it into its own vault. So that's why we installed a lockbox and you saw us, team member Justin locking that up earlier today. So this client put family safety first. He spared no expense. We're not gonna tell you how much he spent on this system, okay? He put his family number one. So that's why that's what we did for this client today. Sure enough, he could have gone to Costco. Sure enough, he could have gone to Walmart. Oh, here's Eddie again, ranting about Walmart and ranting about Amazon. But yeah, you know what? You can get those Nest cameras. You can get those Ring cameras. But you know what? You don't own the video because you have to pay for membership. I mean, it is a great model for these people to have continuous revenue by charging people subscription. But really think about it, okay? You might be saving a lot of money by just getting those $100 cameras, those $125 cameras, okay? Quickly, you can put it on, put it on your Wi-Fi and record, but guess what? You bought that product, that product is yours, but you don't own the video. Why? You don't own the video because you gotta pay for subscription. That is ridiculous. I mean, I'm probably gonna get hammered on the comments, but can you imagine that you buy a product, you bring it to your house, and it's not really yours, it's your own video. You are recording your surrounding, your safety, and they're saying, well, you know, we're not gonna give you the video unless you just sign up for subscription. That is absolutely ridiculous. And not only that, you cannot go back and retrieve the video because you don't have subscription. So with the system that we installed our client, he owns the video, he owns the recorder, okay, he doesn't have any subscriptions, and that he can go anytime and watch any video of anything that happened in his, around his neighborhood, around the surrounding of his house, he could always go back and he owns that video. He doesn't have to call us, 
There's no subscription to us or to anybody else. That's why we installed that system, and that is the difference between you're owning your own system or you buying one of those over-the-counter, Amazon, Google Nest, all that good stuff that you have to pay membership that you don't really own your own video unless you pay for membership. So I think that should be the end of that, right? Should we wrap it up? Okay, let's wrap it up. I've been ranting too much. I'm sorry. Call me the angry installer. I don't care. Uh, make sure you share, subscribe, uh, drop a comment in there, uh, tell people about us, uh, and um, just stand by for the next home media video.